Hello everyone, and welcome back to another endgame build video. Today we're going to be talking about the hammer. One of my most played weapons. This might be my most played melee weapon. Although it doesn't show it on the Xbox, I've put an enormous amount of time into this across all three consoles. It's just such a fun weapon to use because it's similar to the longsword in the way that really you have extra room on your build, which allows you to put extra skills like wide range on or more defense or more offense, whatever it is you want to do. Now, as you guys have probably figured out, these end game builds are pre Elatrion, as I've mentioned before in the other videos. And I do focus on both defense and offense. I notice I get a lot of negativity because I focus somewhat on defense and it always really surprises me because the build has plenty of room on it. If you really hate defense that much, just remove the defense and put on some offensive skills. That's the whole point of these builds is there's a lot of room to change them if you if you like to have more offense, right? So probably one of the key differences between my builds and the builds that you're getting recommended is I don't bring Master's Touch. You'll notice I have Divine Blessing Secret, which I consider to be a ridiculously powerful defensive skill. And I have Agitator Secret, which is pretty standard. Everyone agrees with Agitator Secret. A lot of builds don't take Divine Blessing Secret, they take Master's Touch. The thing is, with the Wetfish uh, Scale quest having been given to us, I don't really see the point of Master's Touch as much. Not just that, but a lot of fights are broken into stages, so you typically, in the most difficult fights, end game fights, you typically are given a chance to sharpen your weapon anyways. And the you'll notice I took the Safajiva weapon. The Safajiva weapons allow us to build for large white sharpness bars. So you have a com uh, you'll notice I haven't finished awakening the weapon, but if I did, I could have even more white sharpness on this weapon. I'm trying to save my Dracolite, obviously, because this account is just a regular account. It doesn't have like a bunch of Dracolite. So anyways, uh, yeah, so the, the Safajiva weapons, I think, have this natural advantage over the Bracadilla's weapons for dropping Master's Touch. You drop the Master's Touch, you take the Divine Blessing Secret, you run with the Large White Sharpness Bar, and if you're fighting something like the Behemoth, he has four stages. If you're fighting Master Ink Cove Taroth, she has three stages. Even Safajiva has multiple stages. And we have the Wetfish skills. Okay, so I, I've had a lot of negativity from people who are just so mad that I don't put more damage into the build and I drop Master's Touch, but you guys, to me, you're, you're the ones being unreasonable because you're not considering defense for end game activities. I can understand if you're fighting trash monsters. So anyways, there's the health regen augmentation as usual. Uh, and let's take a look at the actual build. So you're gonna see the same exact thing you're seeing on all my builds, agitator, agitator crit eye, crit boost, weakness exploit, those are all key skills for damage. You'll notice that the hammer has airborne, and you really don't want to skip airborne with the hammer. That's because the, the hammer actually does terrific air, aerial damage when you're using like um, midair, spinning bludgeon, or you're doing the ledge hops, whatever it is, you do a terrific amount of aerial damage, so don't skip airborne. You can actually get multiple mounts for your team using the hammer quite easily. Uh, you'll notice there's three extra giant decoration slots. This one with the hard fire resistance, this one with the recovery skill, uh, and this blast jewel up here. In fact, if I had more of these expert plus fours, I could even drop something like this guy right here, the friendship expert. So we could get to crit eye uh, level six much easier or seven much easier. Uh, and then here's my mantles as usual. If you wanted even more room on the build, just bring the glider mantle, right? So yeah, pretty standard build. You've already seen this before on my other builds, but uh, let's go give it a run. So I've queued up Ian Garuga, if I'm saying his name right, I'm probably not. Did I eat? I can't remember if I ate. No, I have not. Let's just have the Chef's Choice Platter. You'll notice it'll only give me attack up uh, small. So you can definitely eat for attack up large, but I'm going to save my items. Let me make sure that my items are correct, actually. Yeah, my items are fine. All right, let's head out and beat them up. We're going to give this weapon and build a spin. Do you like the item? Or I'm, I'm sorry, not the item. Do you like the weapon skin? I like the Guild Palace weapon skin. It looks really nice. Pairs with the Silver Knight armor. The Silver Knight layered armor, I should say. All right, and here we are. Can't remember. Are there actually pods here? Huh, I guess not. I guess you have to pick them up in the room ahead of us. Rock steady Mantle. How will I start? I like to start with the Temporal, to be honest, but that requires you to actually dodge through roars. I'm not very good at dodging through Garuga's roar because I don't fight him that much. You guys fight him very much? Let's grab this stone real fast. So I want to throw this. Uh, that was probably a little too far. He saw us too. Who cares? So he's already seen us. I'm going to go ahead and soften up the head by jumping the wrong direction, apparently. <laughs> 
Alright, the head is softened. You'll notice we're already benefiting from the Divine Blessing Secret. It's almost like he's not even damaging us. It's crazy, isn't it? Right here. I was almost going to claw him. I almost did because of the direction uh, he was facing, but then he turned on his own. So you sometimes you have to hesitate a little bit and find out what the monster's next move is. I wonder if I could get another... Oh, he missed. I wonder if I could get another Big Bang out. Big Bang's really it's supposed to be a move that you're not supposed to be able to get away with unless the monster's knocked down, but yeah, see, there it is. I got it. Don't feel like I dealt a lot of damage, though, because we weren't hitting his head. Oh, he's mad. He's so angry at my cat. Really don't fight this guy enough. All right, there he is. He's not feeling so good. I'm not feeling so good. Smash him in the head. That's going to be KO. So the hammer gets KOs, usually about two if you're playing solo. And this is part of how the hammer tries to keep up with the weapons like the greatsword. Not just damage, but also a little bit of crowd control, right? Because that's what that's what a KO is. And you notice I didn't put on a KO decoration on the build, and that's because I don't feel that the KO decorations are really that useful for the hammer. More damage is, is probably a better option. Oh. Man, that move has a lot of range. God, dude. Temporal Mantle coming in handy. Look at him, he's so he's so accurate and so aggressive. Garuga really is uh, one of the tougher monsters in the game. Alright, that'll be the Temporal Mantle gone. Actually, I wonder if I can get this in before... Oh, nope, apparently I can't. Alright, let's take this off. Let's go ahead and grab some more rocks. They should be right here. Where are they? Oh, there they are. Oh, oh, so close to throwing them into that wall. Monsters that attack quickly, they're hard to get lots of... Oh, there's tremors. Monsters that move quickly, they're harder to throw into walls. Alright, this is a very punishable move. God, you get thrown so far away after the... One, two, he's got to stand up before I'm done, unfortunately, but maybe he'll play out. Nah. That didn't. Oh, not trying a big bang there. There's sometimes I feel like the hammer has this glitch where you're trying to use a the hammer charge and it goes into a big bang instead. I wonder if anyone else has used uh, noticed that. Maybe like other other people who use the hammer a lot. Yep, oh, that's just bad luck. So I want to soften his head, but we have to get lucky and he has to not use an attack that'll punish me. Okay, I tell you what. Why don't we run up the side here and we'll use some. Actually, let's see if he'll focus on my cat for a while. Yes, he will. I was going to say, we can run up to this side and I'll show you some aerial attacks with the hammer. Woo, he is after us, but we're going to jump up here. Alright, and, and what we're going to do, essentially, we're going to trap him on the ledge. And once he's trapped on the ledge, we're going to use our aerial attacks on him. Alright, so there we are. He's facing the wrong direction. Uh, it would be much more damaging if he was facing toward us, you know what I mean? So we're just going to hit him in the tail. It's not really the best hit zone. It's not softened. It's the head that you want. You'll notice we grab him right away. We're going to jump over here. Easy mounts for your teammates, guys. Easy mounts. And, and really in multiplayer, mounts are really powerful. Why? In fact, since I'm mentioning t uh, multiplayer, why don't I talk about two other aspects of the build? There was flinch free was on the build one level of flinch free what is my reasoning for the flinch free and the reasoning is sometimes you want to get a big bang out but your hammer isn't charged and big bang has such a very close timing that sometimes you don't like right here you don't get the chance to charge the hammer before going into the big bang because if you do you're going to miss out on the last swing of the big bang now the problem is if you're playing multiplayer an uncharged hammer can easily be interrupted uh, by another player and often there are other players trying to you know trying to attack them on the head or whatever it is and they end up interrupting you and you lose out on your big bang so one level of flinch free fixes that one level of flinch free fixes that Let's see if we can get another ko now guys two three four 
Come on. Nope, no KO. There's the KO. You know, I felt like we were close. I've played this game for so long, you can just almost feel it. Like, this is the Xbox. I do not have the damage overlay or anything, but I can just kind of tell. And actually, he should be very close to being captured. God damn it. <laughs> the drool actually made it so that I didn't get to punish him. I, I hate the Clutch Claw so much. The drooling mechanic is a new thing that we got with Clutch Claw, so it's just annoying. Call my cat over here real fast. Alright, he's gonna die. <laughs> Figured I'd do that rather than using a trap. Probably I could have easily trapped him, but I mean it's cheaper. I don't have to spend my traps. Alright, and that's the hammer. Uh, aim for the head. <laughs> aim for the head. The flinch freeze is gonna help you in multiplayer. You got one level of wide range, which you can use to like... You know, heal your teammates of maybe poison or something useful like that. You can actually fit all the wide range you need on the build. But if you're going to do a wide range build with the hammer, I actually have an even better build where you bring free meal secret and you do this by using a Safajiva hammer and you put the Tigrix skill onto the Safajiva hammer by giving up one, one level of your attack upgrade. See, so the awakened abilities, you give one of those up, you bring the uh, Tigrix skill and then you can get free meal secret and all your wide range and plenty of damage so that's that's a different build though <laughs> but yeah if you wanted to take this build with wide range you easily could you drop the fire resist you drop the blast attack you don't need the blast attack you know it's just i just throw it on extra you drop the recovery speed you don't need any of that so those are just extra defense and they're more like examples of what you could take on the build because there's so much room on a hammer build just like the longsword longsword and hammer really are two of my favorite weapons just because they're so flexible they can really do whatever it is you need them to do while putting out terrific damage all right well that was nice and fast that's going to be the end of the video i'll have more weapon builds out for the end game soon i want to thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time